Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. Today's episode has to do with an insect that showed up on my back porch yesterday. And you know that my Nature in Backyard episodes are always featuring things that you can find outside your house, maybe in your backyard or in a park or a wooded area near your house. So in keeping with my teaching, following stuff that just shows up around here, today I found a beetle. And we've talked about different kinds of insects. We've talked about butterflies and moths, wasps, bees, flies, and bugs. And today we're going to talk about another category of, of insects called the beetles. And beetles are characterized by having oblong or oval shape with a hard exoskeleton and, like other insects, six legs, two eyes, and two antennae. And the particular group of beetles we're going to talk about today are called longhorn beetles. And they're called longhorn beetles because they got these long antenna that are disproportionately long compared to their body. Longhorn beetles sometimes have antenna that are twice as long as their body. And I look at them and I think, well, how do they even get around? So today's beetle is a kind of longhorn beetle called a Sawyer beetle. And the reason it gets its name Sawyer beetle it's because you can go in the woods and stop and listen for a moment and it'll be all quiet and then you might hear a scrape, 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 scrape. And that's the sound of a Sawyer beetle larva sawing through wood. The larva of these Sawyer beetles get their name because they eat wood as larva and you can hear them scraping inside. And so it sounds like someone cutting a piece of wood with a saw. So they call it a Sawyer beetle. We've also talked about different names for larva of different kinds of insects. The larva of a butterfly is called a caterpillar. The larva of a beetle is called a grub. The larva of a dragonfly is called a nymph. So different species of insects have different names for their larva. But the larva has a brown head, no legs, and a fat kind of plump, fleshy, flesh-colored body with no exoskeleton armor on it at all. Only their head, their brown head, has that hard insect-type exoskeleton. And as you can imagine, with their head, they have big jaws, and they have jaws strong enough to dig through wood. So now, let's, say, let's zoom in and take a close look at this longhorn beetle called a Sawyer beetle that I found on my back door. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. Uh, while I found this guy walking around on my back porch yesterday, I put him in one of my plastic terrarium, which is great to have around the house. And these are great because, you know, you're, you can see your specimen inside easily, easy access to them. And they're really, really well ventilated. It's always important to keep organisms well ventilated. And I'm going to keep this guy just for today. And when I finish him, we'll take him out in the woods and put him on a tree. I've got him in a bug box right now, and I'm going to take him out here in a minute. But I wanted to show you some close-up detail of this organism. So this particular Sawyer beetle is called the white spotted Sawyer beetle. And you can see it gets its name white spotted because it's a dark colored beetle with some white spots on it. And one spot in particular that's very important in the identification of this one is that white spot on his back. And you see that white spot is in the dead center 
at the top of his wings where the wings divide. That is one of the really clear, distinctive ways to identify this particular type of Sawyer beetle. The wing pads, those wing covers, are called elytra. That's the scientific word to describe the hard outer covering. And beetles can fly, and this guy is no exception, and he can open those wing covers called elytra, and underneath will be a pair of wings like you would see on a fly or a wasp or a bee that are kind of see-through with lots of veins on them. The other characteristic is you can see just behind his head there are two triangular shaped points sticking out on the side. Now another thing about these Sawyer beetles, remember that they live in, as a larva, they live in wood and they eat wood. Well, when this guy comes out of his larval stage, they will pupate in the wood itself, like in a rotten log. He has to be able to cut his way out of that log. So can you see those jaws right there? I'm not picking this beetle up with my fingers because if those jaws are strong enough to cut wood, those jaws are going to be strong enough to, to pinch me. And I don't, he, he won't bite me because he doesn't have anything he needs from me. Um, he doesn't need a blood meal from me. So he won't actually like go out of his way to bite me. But if I hold him in my fingers and he tries to escape from me, he might want to bite. Now, he gets a name Longhorn Beetle, of course, because look at those long antenna. Like, they're just like long horns. And the females of this species, their antenna are about as long as their body, which is still pretty long. But the male... So this Longhorn Beetle is clearly a female because its antenna are as long as it is but a male would have antenna twice as long. So I need to interrupt this video. So here's what happened. I made this video on the adult longhorn beetle, not imagining that it could actually go out and find longhorn beetle larvae on the same day I found them. Well, my grandson came last week and I already filmed the whole longhorn adult thing. I was going to release it tomorrow morning. And I said, hey, why don't we do a nature in your backyard together? Let's go look for some best beetles and we'll do video on best beetles. And so we came to this wood pile right here. And I thought, well, this will be a great place to find best beetles. Well, as we start getting into it, we actually found not best beetles. And we found a lot of other things too, but we found the Sawyer beetle larva and we didn't know for sure what they were i had to do some research and i contacted my friend eric day at the virginia entomology department identification lab and found out whoa i've got sawyer beetle larva here so the rest of the video integrates my grandson henry my granddaughter lucy and a bunch of other stuff so check it out so this is a great place to look for best beetles and beetle larvae in general. And I've been up here digging some things out, pulling out pieces of rotten wood. And then I even used this uh, uh, log splitter to split this open and see what I can find. And you can see that there's been a lot of activity here, that this wood has been all chewed up by something. When insects chew up wood, uh, pass it through their gut, we call it frass. And some of it is from their tunneling activity, cutting through the wood with the jaws, which is more like sawdust. And some of it, they've actually digested. And so I'm looking in here, see what we can find. Looks and like... a minute ago, I saw a beetle grub in here. And I'm gonna take this piece here and split it again and see what I can find. I've been splitting this a little bit and right in here you can see something white and shiny and that is a beetle grub. I'm digging in a little bit here and I can just about get to this and this wood is pretty hard so he's tunneling through some pretty hard wood right now. 
I've split the wood some more and I've just about got him to a point where I think I can pull him out. And you can see that he has a brown head with jaws and a puffy slimy body that looks almost see-through. We don't know what that thing is. So today I've got my grandson Henry with me. And this is Henry. Say hi Henry. Hi. Hi. What do we got here? Can you point to it? Can but you show us? We don't but we don't know what that is. We don't know what that is right but there. We know that's what. Yeah, we what know it's it? a beetle larva. But we're not sure exactly what kind, and we're gonna see if we can get him to come all the way out. And I'm trying to gently Gently, 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 because he's very soft and very puffy. And whoa! What do you think of that, Henry? Mm -hmm. Huh? I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I don't it even... Like it looks like it's a worm. It looks like a worm, doesn't it? Yeah. But let's see, does it have legs on it? Can we see any legs? Do you see any legs on it, Henry? No, but there's what's inside it. Yeah, you can see through and see its guts inside. That's crazy, isn't it? And I guess because he lives in the dark, he doesn't have to have any coloring. Whoa, come here, you. And let's see if we can look closely at his head, Henry. What do you see on his head? Just a chopper thing that chops wood up. Do you see the little jaws? Um, little things that chop wood up? Yeah, little jaws, and it looks like a beak that chops the wood. That yeah. Makes, that makes holes for it, him to live. We were going to do one of the best beetles, but we found that guy instead. So here is a beetle larva in action, yes. trying to get back under something. And you can see it's completely see-through. You can see his gut. I found gut. another one. Found Henry, it. found another one. You want to bring that over here, Henry? And we'll take a look at that one as well. Uh, don't know if they're grubs, Pops. Well, we do know they're grubs. We know they're beetle grubs. And they're beetle grubs that eat wood. But we're not sure exactly what kind they are. And we're going to have to do a little research. And, and we see that they're see-through. No legs, they've got a brown head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after a little bit of research and also sending an email with some close-up photos to Eric Day to confirm what I thought, these are in fact the larva of the longhorn beetle known as a Sawyer beetle. And these larvae are the ones that you can hear when they're eating the wood in the forest. And that's how they got the name Sawyer beetle. And these guys, we can keep them in a container with the moist, rotten wood that we found them in, and we can see what they are after they pupate and emerge as adults. So here's the hole where the beetle grub was found. I actually had to split this wood with an ax, and you can see that this wood is really, really solid, and it's so amazing that their jaws can cut right through that. You see how the, their jaws were able to cut and burrow into that wood. And this is my granddaughter, Lucy. She's helping me today too with nature in your backyard. So let's review what we know about longhorn beetles. They ha undergo complete metamorphosis, which means after they're laid from an egg, they develop into a dramatic difference between adults and larvae. The larvae are called grubs. And the grubs live in wood, eat decaying wood. They're not like harmful to the environment. They don't eat live trees. They're not a threat to live trees, but the larva will like to eat the wood. The larva will live in wood for a year or two years before they undergo metamorphosis. And when the larva, called a beetle grub or a grub, finishes eating wood and he's ready to pupate. He'll pupate inside that log and inside the pupa he'll undergo a transformation where he'll change 
from a fat, fleshy, white grub with no legs and just a head with big jaws on it until this complex specimen. Females have shorter antenna, but males have antenna that are twice the length of their body, so this one is likely to be a female. The females will mate with males and they'll lay eggs in little slits on rotten logs, and the eggs will hatch out and the life cycle will start over again. So here he is in his natural habitat. I've released him, or her in this case, and she will probably be going the process of finding a mate so she can lay eggs and repeat this cycle. Thanks for watching today's episode of Nature in Your Backyard. So today we saw the white spotted Sawyer beetle. You know, and I just keep thinking how amazing animals are. There are so many different stories. Today we heard the story of the life of the Sawyer beetle. Just a, a beetle that walked by, a kind of longhorn beetle that showed up on my back porch. And I picked it up and thought, hey, what is this? And, you know, I looked it up and I researched it just like I want you to do. So uh, there's just so many amazing stories, just one after another. I love telling these stories to you. And again, I don't want you to just watch these videos. I want them to inspire you to go out and look outside, look around your house and in your backyard or in your neighborhood or in a local park and see what you can find. And write me, uh, send me pictures of what you find if you can't identify them. Google stuff, fact check me. After you look at this, look up Sawyer beetles and see what you can learn about them. So thank you for watching today's episode and I'll let my grandson Henry close the video today. Take it away, Henry. This is Henry Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard.